All right, so let's talk the trial. So here's what's going on so far. It's happening right now, the trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. Uh, the charges are second, third, and second degree, or se second, third degree murder, second degree manslaughter. Nine of the 15 jury members are white. This is just from AJ+. Plus. They're expecting this to take four weeks. Um, now, the courthouse is surrounded by concrete barriers and razor wire. Here's something. I want to show you this. Here's something that the defense uh, opened with or, or near opened with. I, I don't, you know, this isn't like an actual play by play by play by play, but I saw this and I wanted to show it to you. Um, are we to understand, this is a reporter tweeting about the, the case, are we to understand that the gathering crowd diverted the officers from their duty of caring for George Floyd as suggested by the defense? Did I hear that right? In other words, the defense is saying these people distracted the police officer who was kneeling on this guy for nine minutes. Yeah. So these people who were like, hey, you might be killing that guy, they distracted the cop who just wanted to do the right thing while he was kneeling on this human being for nine minutes. And, and I'd, I, I bet you might have participated in something similar. I have been to protests over the past year where as a demonstration, we knelt for nine minutes. We knelt for nine minutes. Uh it hurts your freaking knee. It's actually hard. To, and I'm, I'm saying that like that's how long it is. And this man deliberately knelt on him for nine minutes as he was begging for his life. And mm. the defense is saying, oh, people distracted him. He was distracted. I just, I can't. Man, oh, it's infuriating. I man, I hope the jury's good. I, really I hope so, too. I, I don't have a ton of hope if uh, if I'm being honest with you, just because how many times have we seen this before? I, I too many to count where, where the cops get off. But I will say this, Lauren, the one thing that I a little different is that this is the first time. And let me know if you agree with or disagree with this, because maybe maybe I'm off here. But this is the first time that I can think where there's it's still very fresh in the public's mind as the trial is happening there there is a systemic um thread that has been going on from you know from shooting to shooting that they wait just long enough that it's really out of the public's attention then they have the trial hoping it just slides under the radar and this is systemic they they're, oh it's just the wheels of justice turn slowly yeah when a poor person does something wrong, tell me how slowly the wheels of justice turn. This is a systemic thing to try to make sure that cops get off without any consequences. But this is the yeah. first time that I can think of where it's actually happening while it's still very fresh in the public's mind. Is there something to that? Am I being overly optimistic? What, what do you think? I. It's just like the the protests have not stopped. So we've been protesting since last year, since it happened. And I'm just, I'm terrified if this man is, is set free into society. Like it, it, I can't imagine. Like everyone who's been working for reform is not going to take that well. And I mean, like I've said before, white supremacy dies hard. So I just, we're at a place in our society where like, I can see, I, I'm almost scared to say it out loud, but like people are really at the ends of their rope. And, um, I think that a lot is centered around this particular case too, because it's really people versus a corrupt system. Right. And it's, uh, it's, it's a uh, black lives matter versus this police white supremacy centered criminal injustice system. And I think that so much is riding on how this, case turns out um 
And I think if if things don't show some kind of justice being served, then we just haven't seen protests yet, if that makes sense. That's no, just I, my... I, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I mean, it is just... Uh, and I think finally you're seeing things like defund the police become more common vernacular. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, and, and this is just like more a semantics thing, but, but I, I think even just reform is, is that ship has sailed a long time ago. You can't mm -hmm. reform this. It, it's not, yeah. you cannot reform this. This is a system that is rotten to its core by design. And what really needs to happen is defund, demilitarize. And, and I go as far, I say, we got to abolish we have to abolish the way uh, abolish. I make up my own words. That's how fucking passionate I am. We need to abolish. <laughs> it's a new thing. We 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 get rid of something electronically. Abolish. <laughs> yeah. And, no, and we I need like we need to abolish. And when I say that, I don't mean there's not going to be any law enforcement in the world. I, I wish we could live in that world, but I don't think we can. There there needs to be some law and order. But we reinvent the way it works in our lives because this whole system is just when you take a step back, you realize how ridiculous it is when you really take it. All right. We're going to give this under trained, under screened person a badge and a gun, and we're going to have them respond to any situation with pure impunity. They can do whatever the hell they want. And most of the stuff they're responding to, they're going to be completely ill-equipped to deal with. They have no qualif They have no qualifications to handle someone who is, is mentally ill. They have no qualifications to really settle a dispute because their, their inclination is to shoot first and ask questions never. And we're just going to have them respond to everything. That's not serving and protecting. That's that's authoritarianism. That's just straight up what that is. So we need to straight up abolish this system. If if we actually want uh, real law and order for the betterment of society, we need to completely reinvent what that means in our lives. In this mm -hmm. current system, you can't do it in this current system. It's impossible. Yeah, I think about um, I, I whenever we say we can't do it here, I look at other countries that have completely different criminal justice systems. Not that any country is perfect, but I just recently saw an example in Japan. Um, somebody was telling a story about um, sleeping in a park um, as a tourist, but I'm just thinking about how um, houseless people are treated here where people have put spikes um, under bridges, for example. Um, so, there was a woman who was sleeping in a tent in Japan and a police officer there um, kind of knocked on her tent, if you will. She opened it up expecting her, uh, expecting them to tell her that she had to leave, but they found her backpack, looked at her ID and wanted to give it back to her. And they just said um, to be safe. Hmm. So, I can't imagine what that would look like here. And um, especially not if you are a person of color. Um, situations escalate so quickly. If you are a person of color that has to come in contact with the police. And the fact that people of color have to worry for their lives on a regular basis for walking outside on the street um, when I can just walk down the street and get treated completely differently for the color of my skin. It's just not okay that, that that's normal in our society. Yeah. I mean, and it's, we as a society is like, like we are just such a brutality first society and we mm -hmm. have just the utmost hatred for for poor people and, and for, for homeless people. And, and, and I mean, it's just, I mean, I mean, this is a, this is a much, um, this is kind of a, a much less heavy example. Um, but you know, I, it, it was just kind of interesting to me. I, I had to buy deodorant the other day and, uh, uh you know, one thing, Hey, one thing about, uh, these quarantine times, the last time a stick of deodorant lasted me this long, I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> 
So, but, uh, but it was that time I had to buy some and <laughs> I'm at the drugstore in my neighborhood. I think it was just a CVS or whatever. And the deodorant was locked up, which, uh, you know, and I, I was, deodorant is locked up and I, and I was thinking, is there, is there some kind of drug people can make with deodorant? I mean, I know sometimes they lock up these certain types of cold medicine if you can make meth. Yeah. You know, and, and so I'm thinking, like, what are people making with deodorant? Why is the deodorant locked up? And so I had to get someone from the front register to open the case for me. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to make small talk just to have a human interaction. So I said, hey, man, I know it's not your call here and, and I'm not complaining, but I got to be curious, dude. Why? Why do you lock up deodorant? Like, mm -hmm. I was like, what are people doing with this? Like, why are you doing this? And he goes, people steal it. And I go, okay. I, I mean, I, I mean, people steal everything, man. I, I mean, I, I don't know. And he goes, well, they'll steal, like he said, like sometimes they'll try to steal cases of it or something, which kind of sounded okay. weird to me. Like, I can't imagine people like, like walking with <laughs> like cases of deodorant, like, ah, we got them. But it's just, amazing to me that they would rather have this situation where they they lock stuff up which, which by the way like it costs money to do that and then they have to like have somebody unlock this deodorant because occasionally people might steal it which people will steal stuff like that because they're desperate not because they're yeah. like oh one over on you exactly it's just remarkable to me because even if you look at it from the perspective of the capitalist, the perspective of I only care about the bottom line uh, and, I, and I'm a company person or whatever, it probably costs you more money to just have all this extra security and, and also have the labor of people who need to just open these cases for people yeah. who want to buy them. And then you're going to have other people who are going to be like, you know, I'm just not going to buy my deodorant here anymore. Because I, I'd rather just go to a place where it's not freaking locked up so I can just put it in my cart and go about my day. Exactly. It's probably costing you more. <laughs> but it's like even the capitalists, they, yeah. they, hate, they hate poor people that much <laughs> that they'd rather have a more costly thing than just be like, like every now and again, people steal deodorant. It's, it's the world we live in, unfortunately. It's sad all that that's- stealing. Yeah, like all the stealing that billionaires do from society. It's like, and we yeah. lock up deodorant. Yeah, yeah. We're mad at the people who, who steal deodorant because they're desperate. Mm -hmm. Because they're desperate. Like, like people steal. I mean, there was that one, I think it was in Philadelphia, where that guy stole some stuff from a pharmacy and he just left a note and he said, I'm sorry, I have a sick kid and I have no choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, I would. Society is the problem. That guy yeah, is like, not the problem. Society, the, the society that put that guy in that desperate of a situation, that's the freaking problem. Exactly. And like to think that somebody like him could get locked up for trying to help his kid. But billionaires who steal from their workers every single day to hoard their money are tweeting that they don't make their employees pee in cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I mean, even just you look at what Wall Street does, the way they treat our society like their own playground and people's mm -hmm. pensions get destroyed in the balance, people's jobs get destroyed in the balance. There's no repercussions. They just go on playing their games. When the game, when their own game is used against them, they, they, pit, they pitch a hissy fit. Like what happened with the with the um, GameStop situation? Yeah. Yes. And, and we're just like, oh, we need more regulation. We need more regulation. No, no one's supposed to use our rules against us. The the poor's aren't supposed to be able to do that. We mm -hmm. use this world as our playground. We've generated capital upon capital so that it's worth about a quadrillion, and we've been able to do this off the backs of everyone. Because if you trace every single dollar that goes into Wall Street, it can be traced back to the public to we yeah. the people. So they used our entire society as their own playground. That's perfectly legal. But the desperate person stealing a stick of deodorant, 
uh, or the person who was targeted by a cop and then was knelt on for nine minutes. I, I mean, even, it, it's, like, wasn't they? They looked into why he was called in the first place, and it was false. Wasn't it over a, 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 a supposed like, counterfeit bill, right? Yeah. Like it was supposedly okay. counterfeit. Which, yeah, why would you ever need to call the cops in that situation? And it why? wasn't. I, it's my understanding that that was false in the first place, mm. and that's that's really what I'm. What I I know that we both agree on is whenever we're talking about like it's too late to reform. It's like the fact that someone's first instinct is to call the cops and the cops show up and they kill a guy because of a potential payment issue that didn't exist in the first place. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, and wow. I mean, how do you, how do you live with yourself if, if you're defending that guy? Oh, the cop was distracted. <laughs> The cop was, he was distracted by all the people walking by saying, I think you're going to kill that man. Mm -mm. I think you're killing him. The people, I mean, it didn't, I'm pretty sure someone walked by and they said, Hey, I'm a doctor. You, you have to get off of him. You're going to kill him. I'm a medical it's professional. So what you're doing, you're kneeling on him. His lungs are against the ground. He soiled himself at one point. He peed yeah. at one point. So sad. I mean, it's, it's well, it's, it's sickening. It's God. There's there's not a word for it. I, no. I, I mean, there's not a word for it. How utterly, just I mean, we're just a completely morally bankrupt society on so many levels, on so many levels, and it's. Hopefully, this doesn't end with Jeff Bezos just becoming emperor, and we all need to flee somewhere. I, it, it might, though. It, it might. <laughs> Everyone just needs to keep checking all the bills that go through Congress for like Make secret. Sure. <laughs> Make sure there's no there's no Bezos pork in there. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no Bezos pork that gives up like, like ah, he could steal your car. This is we thought this was a great thing. We thought this was a really cool thing. We got municipal broadband, but Bezos could steal our car. Yeah. Bezos, he's going around, his people are taking our cars. There was some guy, he's, he's, I'm, why are you taking my car? He's like, I'm a Bezos guy. I'm allowed to take this. And I'm tweeting about how no one actually pees in a bottle. Leave me alone. I'm, <laughs> I'm busy. All right. But I but I get your car. I'm sorry. Here's a coupon for a taco. <laughs> so, right. I, that's exactly what's going on here. So, wow. What do you, well, let's just kind of, do you think, there's a chance we might see some semblance of justice this time. And I know we're, we're day one on a, what's likely yeah. going to be at least a month long thing. But again, like the one difference and I, I, I still don't have very much optimism. I think this guy's going to get off, but I will acknowledge the one difference this time is, is that it's still so, um, so potent in the public spotlight and that's the first time it's ever really been like this in, in my memory i imagine unfortunately that they will play that video for everyone to see at least once the whole way through i cannot imagine watching nine minutes of a man begging for his life i have no comprehension of how you can possibly side with the cop, but I I admit that I'm naive and idealistic, but I can't imagine. I I'm surprised every time. That's I I say it all the time. Is that like I'm I, I'm an idealist, and that's why I'm just perpetually depressed because <laughs> I keep getting disappointed. <laughs> like I have high standards. And I keep getting disappointed by our society. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make